guys, what's up? Aru, Moonlit Bamboo Forest. Yes, Hoyo Fair just released an animation that finally brought justice to this borderline allegorical book that every Genshin lore nerd, including me, keeps referencing in literally our theories. And not only do we get justice for the actual size of the bamboo forest in Liwe, which is said to be the size of a kingdom, we also get to see the various myths and tales about it in glorious, and I mean absolutely glorious, detail. From the fox spirits that lure children and take their souls away, to the spirit horses, as well as the gorgeous lady in white and her golden eyes. Other details like the rite of dissension, the guardian statues of Liwe, the fauna, and even the various other spirits are presented just like the actual lore of Genshin Impact which is really, really cool. The animation was done by Passion Pictures, which if you aren't familiar with, they made Zima Blue from Love, Death, and Robots. The musical score was written by Cecile, I'm sorry if I butchered the name, who worked on the music for Studio Ghibli, Secret World of Arietti. I mean, just listen to how well Arietti's theme fits with the animation. So all of that and some of the theories surrounding the book and its implications will also be included in this video. As always, timestamps will be down below. Let's get started. Hoyo Fair's Moonlit Bamboo Forest roughly covers Volume 1 and 2 ish of the series of books within Genshin Impact. The animation highlights the journey of just a small town boy leaving the sleepy Qingxi village and trekking through the bamboo forest of Mount Qingxi, where the boy encounters different spirits, especially fox spirits within the forest often mentioned as legends and fairy tales by his elders. Nearly losing his life in the process and almost turning into musical instruments that endlessly blare into his captured soul, he was quickly saved by another spirit, a white horse spirit that was said to have joined the Geo Archon in his campaigns. The animation ends with the boy waking up and meeting with a lady with golden eyes garbed in white, followed by a to-be-continued message, and that's basically the entirety of the animation. Now why don't I walk you through the lore of Moonlit Bamboo Forest as well as some details that we can find in the animation itself. Something about the animation compared to the book is that in the actual Moonlit Bamboo Forest, the young boy didn't actually see or get caught up with the fox spirits, nor did the lady garbed in white try to save him. But hey, we don't mind a little creative freedom in visualizing a book of tales and legends, don't we? That aside, the location of the young boy and the bamboo forest is actually pretty accurate, meaning the boy crossed the bridges of Qingxi village and then started his journey through the bamboo forest. Right away, we can see the huge actual scale of the bamboo forest compared to the one in-game, which is this. The bamboo forest was said to be an entire kingdom that the Geo Archon conquered. An interesting detail we can see from the animation is the different flowers and local specialties for both food and ascension materials. Sweet flowers, glazed lilies, violet grass, and even horse tails. Not to mention Mount Qingxie's small altars and stone beasts with Adeptus Amber sticking out, which is related to an old secret within Qingxi village, the Qi of Yore. A serpent-like dragon that was sealed away by the Geo Archon long ago, which you can find right around here. Legends say that the Geo Archon fought the Chi at a great height and defeated all of its aspects, whatever that meant. The dragon statues in the animation also serve as guardians of the land. Mortals were once taught by Morex, the Geo Archon, to create these stone beasts to suppress the power of the Chi. And the Adeptus Amber is rumored to originate from the Adepti to suppress evil. Now there's a familiar scene right around here that looks a lot like the Rite of Dissension that we see in game. Reminding us that seeing Morax as well as other Archons isn't really a normal thing for mortal humans compared to what we often see in game. Now other statues of course were living illuminated beasts that served the Geo Archon to fight demons and all who stood against Liyue. But now they rest as statues to ward off evil spirits and await to be called upon by their god. Speaking of spirits, did you know that the fox spirits of the bamboo forest could only be seen by children? Fox spirits tend to come out in the rainy seasons to be married to their fox wives. A grand procession would take place in the great forest accompanied by dances and music with drums and strings. And I think they were perfectly portrayed in the animation. Now the spirits within the forest aren't exactly mentioned as evil, but neither are they the friendly type of spirits. And that's because they're spirits that do spirit things and aren't harmful unless provoked or when you get too close. 
which we could see from the animation upon seeing the fox spirits, he wasn't taken right away and only when he went too close did he fall victim. They don't exactly lure children away either, but the energy of the procession itself could easily distract and attract children into joining the actual procession. But once children wander too close, their souls would be taken and turned into various instruments endlessly tormenting their souls with the blaring music of the procession itself. The spirits in the animation can also be seen within the game, albeit in a different location, Wuwang Hill. Now there's no relation between the two locations but if you're curious, you can find spirits there. Moving on to the white horse spirits and the lady garbed in white. It is said that illuminated beasts in the form of white horse spirits would leap from the clear springs of the forest to become Adepti, assisting Morax in his numerous campaigns as the Archon. Adepti often are illuminated beasts and have formed a contract with Morax and the Geo Archon. It is however unknown as to which clear springs that these white horse spirits come from as well as what their actual names are. Nor do we have any Adeptus that possess the form of a horse. Now we could assume that such mystical beasts are similar to the Carp Adeptus Fujin or Ling Yuen, the wild and free illuminated beast in Chen Yu Vale. Fujin once lived under a different god before the Archon Wars, gaining the title of Adeptus after defecting to the Geo Archon and Li Wei. Now the lady in white mentioned in the book didn't actually save the boy, but rather meets with the boy after he got lost in the bamboo forest. Her first words, are you lost, seemed less friendly and more teasing in the book. She was also mentioned to not be an adeptus, which I think is more similar to Ling Yuwen. But that's from the perspective of the young boy. And her stories would also imply that she would be more than an illuminated beast that works under an archon. Now this is where we stray from the animation because it's basically done and move on to the next chapters which I think would be a sight to behold once we get a second animation. You see, the stories told by the Lady in White more or less predate the time of Morax, the Geo Archon. This would imply that the era that she belonged to was way before the era of the Seven, even earlier than Zhongli himself, which suggests the Primordial Era or the Seely Era. Interestingly, the animation included Seelys wandering next to the Lady in White. She says that her tales have long been forgotten by people, and such stories of the past now have become legends and myths only passed down through generations. Now, one of her stories speaks of the three Moon Sisters, which is again older than the Geo Archon, daughters of prose and song named Arya, Canon, and Sonnet, who lived in a lunar palace. These daughters were sovereigns in the night sky and would take turns on a silver carriage every shun, assumed to be 10 day intervals. Making sure they followed this process because if not, then a disaster would ensue. Of which did happen when a Seely ancestor and a traveler would share an oath within their lunar palace. As the disaster happened, their silver carriage was overturned and their palace was ransacked, whatever that meant. The Moon Sisters were said to have killed each other based on the Lady in White, but in other accounts, two or all of the sisters have died, and one of their dead corpses became Tevat's moon, while the other was said to have become the moon in the abyss. So maybe the third one is this moon right here, the Crimson Moon. Theories surrounding the Moon Sisters go from the Welkin moon being one, because Welkin means heaven or sky, so heavenly moon, to them being the four shades of the primordial one who devoured each other long ago. The moons of Tevat and the Abyss also being moon sisters, which is the Crimson Moon, the Black Sun, and the Normal Moon. And even Paimon and the Sustainer of Heavenly Principles was speculated to also be a moon sister. Something that may work with the next patch is that all three are musical pieces except for Sonnet. But if translated to the original Chinese name, it reads as Sonata, which is also a musical piece. So, three musical pieces. Remoria is centered around music, so King Remus and his quote-unquote symphony might have some clues about that time period as well. But Moon Sister theory is better discussed in a different video. As for the Lady in White, she could possibly be the horse that pulled the silver carriage or chariot or maybe even an actual Moon Sister. Her descriptions include silvery light and silvery moonlight, which points a lot of fingers to the silver carriage 
that the Moon Sisters rode. When the young boy got older and they came back to the forest, he heard a whinnying cry of a horse and then ended up with a silver strand of horse hair or a person's hair on his shoulder. Now within the book, there are translation errors that can imply different events, which I think is going to be interesting depending on how the animators would portray the rest of the book. From Volume 3, The Lady in White states, Before the ancient immortals established the universe, there were gods that wandered across the lands. It was at this time that many of the Adepti came into being. But what about before then? But in a different translation of her words from Chinese, she says, Before the forebears of the Adepti united the nation, there were gods that wandered across the land. It was at this time that many of the Adepti came into being. But what about before then? This again implies that her knowledge of the past as well as her own age is longer than the oldest being we know of. That and we already have proof of gods living in the land before the Adepti, which points to the multitude of gods that were in Liwe. Osail, the Chi of Yor, the God of Chenyu Vale, the God of Salts, Havria, and a lot more other gods. And after the two parted, long years after, the boy realized how different she was, and that the fate of the Lady in White was to hide from everything, even the Archon Zhong Li, and protect the ancient tales that even she was slowly forgetting. This would imply that the Lady in White isn't affected by erosion, but rather affected by her own age. Now if Zhong Li has to rely on stone tablets to preserve the past, what then can the Lady in White do to preserve her past and memories other than to keep them to herself? As the events of the past are only conveyed through word of mouth, only those that can remember such tales of the Lady in White can speak of it. And even then, their own stories have their own spin, as it is how legends and fables are passed down. Fairy tales that people can only believe, just like real history and its own legends of the past are questioned of its credibility. Did we actually have gods back then? I don't know. So we can only hope to witness her in the bamboo forest, and we can also only hope that she can be playable, because by god, look at that character design. And there we go, the moonlit bamboo forest, both the animation and the books, its lore and events within the game, and some theories on both the Moon Sisters as well as the Lady in White herself. Honestly, I really want to see more of the Lady in White than the Moon Sisters, since she could still be alive today and we have a better chance of getting lore from her, as well as a really well-designed character opportunity for Hoyo. But that's enough for me, I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment, and enjoy, subscribe, and hit the bell for more of my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!